Hello and welcome. First of all, thank you very much for joining the course. I hope the content will be helpful for your personal projects. In this course, we will learn step by step how to use scripting with Python using the scripting section that comes integrated inside the application. At the end of the course, you will have the basic knowledge to create your own add-ons that will allow you to create custom shapes. This course will not explain in deep concepts of programming Python of the Blender API. Only the necessary explanation will be given in order to be able to finish the practices. If you like the content of the course, I invite you to leave a review and a rating. I also invite you to see the courses I have published on Udemy. With nothing more to say, let's begin. Before starting, we must go to the scripting section. To do that, we will press the tab that corresponds to the section we are going to work with at the top of the screen. This section is divided into four parts. In the upper left side, we will be able to see the 3D scenario similar to the layout section. In the middle left side, we will have an area where we will be able to execute lines of code similar to how they will be executed in a terminal. In the lower left side, we will have a log of the action that had been performed. On the right side, we will have a work area where we will be able to write or load code files. This area will serve us later to create more complex tasks that occupy more than one line of code. We are going to remove the predefined objects from the scene. We will select each of the objects individually and press X to delete them. We will be able to observe that every time we delete an object, the action will be recorded in the log represented by the command. Now we will add a cube in the scene. When we add the cube, we can see that the code that corresponds to the add action will be recorded. Now that we have registered the codes that represent each of the actions that we execute, we can copy and paste them in the middle left area. We will eliminate the objects of the scene and then we will copy and paste the registered code to add a cube and we will see that in the scene a cube will be added. We will execute the code and we will observe that a cube will be added on the scene. Now we will copy and paste the code to delete and we will execute it to delete the cube. As we can see, the code to add comes in a predefined form with some parameters that will indicate to Blender the configuration that the cube should have. We can slightly modify each of these parameters to change its position and size. We are going to add three cubes using the code for adding, but modifying the parameters. In the right area, we will press the new button. We can see that an area where we can write has been added. Here we can write lines of Python code to create more complex scripts. We will copy the add code and paste it in the area of the right. If we press the button to execute the code, we will get an error message. 
This error is because in the red area the word BPY is not being detected. BPY is the library that will allow us to access the Blender API. To resolve the error, we will indicate in the code that we will need to import BPY using import BPY at the top. If we press the wrong button again, we will see that the cube will be added in the scene and the error message will no longer be displayed. We will delete the cube we just added. After this, we will add two additional lines of code to add a cube and we will modify the values of location and scale of each one of them. The second cube will be in the position 220 and a size of 0.5. The third cube will be in the position 660 and a size of 0.2. Once the change has been made, we will run the code and we will see how three cubes will be added in different positions and sizes. This is one of the basic ways to work with code. In the following videos, we will use a style of code a little more similar to conventional programming projects where we will handle variables and objects. In the previous video, we added cubes using a code to add cubes. It is also possible to create shapes by creating vertices and connecting them together. Before we start creating vertices, we will remove the cubes we added previously and the lines of code we used to add them. We will create the variable mesh and we will assign a new mesh with the name my mesh. We will use PPY data meshes new to add a new mesh. The mesh object represents the data that compose the figure. We will create the variable obj and we will add a new object with the data of the variable mesh. Object represent the object that will be found in the scene. Now we will create the variable col and we will assign it the reference of the collection called collection. Collection represent the list that comes predefined in the scenario each time a new file is created. We can see this collection in the list of objects on the right side of the screen. We will also link obj to be inside col. This way we can add the object to the scene. Now we will add the variables my birth my edges and my faces. 
each one we will assign an empty object array to it. This variable has its name indicate will serve us to store the information of the vertices, the edges and the faces of the figure. We will add to my birds an object with the value of 1, 1, 0. This will represent the vertices at coordinates x1, y1, and c1. Now we will call the function mesh from pData and pass it the reference of my birds, my edges, and my faces. This function will allow us to build a figure with the data inside the arrays. It will use the information inside my birds to create the vertices of the figures and it will use the information inside my edges and my faces to interpret how each of the vertices will be connected. If we run the code that we have, we will add a figure in the scene that will be made up of a single vertex. We can go back to layout section and we can see in better detail the vertex that we added. We will return to the scripting section and we will remove the figure from the scene. We will add three vertices to my birds that will help us to represent the corners of a plane. We will run the code and we will see how a figure consisting of four vertices will be added. Now we are going to create a figure that will consist of connecting each of the vertices using edges. We will add to my edges an object that will contain the value of 0 and 1. Each of these values represent an index that points to one of the position of my vertices. This means that the first edge will be created using the vertices that are at position 0 and 1 of my vertices. We will add three edges to my edges using the values of the other vertices so that they connect and form a square. We will remove the figure that is in the scene and run the code to add the new figure with the connected edges. Now we are going to create a face with the four vertices we have. For this, we can delete or comment out the code where we add the edges. At the moment of creating the face, 
the edges will be created automatically. Now we can add to my faces an object with the values of 0, 1, 2 and 3. Similar to how we create the edges, the values represent the index that point to the position of the vertices inside my vert. The position of the index is important as it indicates the path that the edges will follow to build the figure. Now we will delete the figure that is in the scene and we will execute the code to create the new figure. With what we have seen in the previous videos, we can now create a cube using only the vertex and face information. We will add to my verts 4 vertices that will represent the top of the cube, and we will add to my faces 5 faces with the vertex information. We will delete the figure that is in the scene and we will execute the code again to add the new figure. Blender allows us to integrate the code we have worked on so that it appears as an option. This can be done through add-ons. To create an add-on, we need to create a PI file where we will store the code. Also, the code must have a specific format for it to work. In the right area, we will create a new file and name it Custom Mesh PI. At the top of the file, we will add the variable blinfo. This variable should have at least the properties name, blender, and category. This will serve to indicate to the user the name of the add-on, the version of Blender in which it works, and a category to which it will belong. The following line that we will add will be import PPY. Now we will add a class that will have the name of custom mesh add-on. We will modify this class in the next videos, but for the moment we will add the variables BL ID name and BL label.
BL ID name is very important because it will be used to assign an identifier with which we can call the function from other functions. We must also add the function execute. This function is the one that will contain the main logic. Outside the class, we will add the function register and unregister. This function will be used to indicate the code to be executed when installing and uninstalling the add-on. Finally, we will add a condition that will check if name is equal to main. If this condition is met, we will call the register function. Now we will create a function that will help us to insert an option inside the add menu. We will create the function menu func. Inside the function, we will call the function self layout operator. To this function, we will pass three parameters. The first one will have the reference of the identifier assigned to custom mesh add-on. The second one will be the label text that the menu option will have. The tier represents an icon that will be displayed next to the name, in this case it will be a cube. Inside register, we will add the code to register the custom mesh add-on class. We will also call the function bpy types view 3 d empty mesh add append and we will pass the reference menu func. This will allow us to add the new option inside the add mesh menu. Inside the function unregister, we will call the function unregister class and view 3 d empty mesh add remove to uninstall the custom mesh add-on class and remove the option from the menu. Now let's add the code to the execute function. At the top of the right area, we will change the work area to display the code we worked on in the previous videos. We will select the code and copy it. After copying it, we will return to custom mesh py. We will paste the code inside the execute function. When pasting it, we must make sure that the code is aligned correctly inside the function. We will delete the code that we are not using.
finally, we will add return finish it. This will allow us to indicate to Blender that the code was executed correctly. Now we are going to install the add-on. First, we will save the changes. We will make sure that the file is called custom mesh p1. For the moment, we can exit scripting. We will go back to the layout section. We are going to delete the figure that is in the scene so that we have the space free of objects again. Now we will select Edit Preferences. The Preferences window will be displayed. Inside we will select Add-ons and in the upper part we will select install. We will select the file custom mesh py. With this, our add on will be added. We will press the checkbox to activate it. We will exit the preferences window. If everything worked correctly, we will press Add Mesh and within the list of figures that we can insert, we will see Custom Mesh. If we select it, the cube that we have created with code will be added. We will delete the cube. If we want to uninstall the add-on, just go back to the preference section and press the remove button located inside the add-on. With this, we will be able to observe that we will no longer have the option to add custom mesh. For now, our add-on will be executed in the same way every time we press the option in the Add menu. Now we are going to modify it to allow us to send values that will modify the behavior of the script to obtain a different result. Inside the custom mesh add-on class, we will add the variable BL options. To this variable, we will assign the value register undo. These values will allow us to display a panel where we can assign values and recreate the figure every time the values are changed. We will add the property size input. We will use it to capture a number that we will use to change the size of the figure. This property will have assigned to it an object with attributes that will help us to configure the form in which the values will be captured. The object will be of type float property. This type of object will allow us to capture numbers with decimals. It will have the following attributes. Name for the name that will be shown on the screen. Description for a description of what it does. Default 
with the value of 1 to indicate that the predefined value will be 1. Min with the value of 1 to indicate that the minimum value that will allow us to assign will be 1. Soft max with the value of 5 to indicate that the maximum value will be 5. To use the value of the property inside the function execute, we will use the word self and we will include the name of the property. This way we will have self size input. We will use this value to change the value of the position of the vertices in the x and y axis. We will modify the code where we add the vertices to multiply the position with the capture value. Once we finish modifying the code, we will save the changes and reinstall the add-on. Once installed, we will add a custom mesh again. we will see that in the lower left part of the work area a panel will appear. We will open it and change the value of size. With this we will see that the size of the cube will change depending on the value we are assigning to it. Now that we know how to create a basic add-on, we can create another one that has a more complex logic. Let's create an add-on that allows us to create a figure based on the rose cure. Rose cure is a cure that will be formed depending on the values of sine and cosine applied to a constant. Using Python and Blender, we can represent this cube as a figure. Let's create a new file and name it rosecurepy. We can use the code from the first add-on as a base. We will copy the code and paste it into the new file. We will delete the code that we won't use. In this case, we will delete the parts where we are adding the values of my birds and my faces.
Now we will change the name of the class, text label and identifier. The class will be called Rose Cure Add-on. We will use as label Rose Cure. The class identifier will be Mesh Rose Cure. We will delete the property size input. Inside menu fund, we will change the value of icon to graph. This will show the icon of a graph. Now let's add the properties that will be used to capture the constant values. We will add the property A input. With this we will control how close to the center the curve will be. This will be of type float property and we will have a minimum value of 1 and a maximum of 5. We will add the property P input. With this, we will control the angle of the curve. This will be of type float property and will have a minimum value of 1 and a maximum value of 5. We will add the property segment input. This will serve us to calculate the position of the curve in different locations. If we have a high value, the curve will be longer. This will be of type int property and will have a minimum value of 2 and a maximum value of 500. The minimum value of 2 is required. Later, we will create a loop where we will need this value in order to not break the logic to build the figure. Now we will work with the formula to obtain the x and y coordinates with which we will plot the curve. For this, we will need to have access to functions that allow us to obtain the value of sine and cosine. At the top, we will import math. Below where we create the variable my faces, we will create a for loop. The number of times it is executed will depend on the value of segment input. The loop will use the variable sec 
to identify the instance of the loop. Inside the loop, we will build the formula. We will create the variable t and assign it the value of set divided by 10. We will use this variable to identify the segment of the cure. It is divided by 10 to get a segment that is not too far away from other segments. We will add the variables x and y. To these two variables, we will assign the parametric formulas to obtain the position of the cure in a Cartesian plane. We will use mat cos and mat sine to obtain the sine and cosine of t. Now we will assign two vertices to my birds. This will have the values of x and y for the respective axes and for the z-axis we will add 1 and minus 1. With this, every time we go through the loops, two vertices positioned vertically will be created. As the minimum value of segment input is 2, this will guarantee us to have four vertices with which we will form one of the faces of the figure. Now we will work with the loop that will allow us to add the values to my faces. We will add the variable bird count and we will assign as value the number of vertices that we have added. We will add the variable i and we will assign it the value of 0. We will use the variable per count and i to create a while loop. This loop will be executed as long as the result of dividing per count by 4 is greater or equal to 1. Each time one of the instances of the loop is executed, the value of per count will be reduced so that eventually the result of the division will be less than 1. Also, in each of the instances, the value of i will be increased in order to obtain one of the values inside my bird. Inside the loop, we will add to my faces a new object with the vertices i, a plus 1, a plus 3, and a plus 2. It is necessary to follow this order. With this, we are connecting the vertices as if it were a U. In this way, the first and last vertex added will complete the phase. We will reduce the value of bird count by subtracting 2. We will increase the value of I by adding 2. Now we will install the add-on. First, we will save the code. We will make sure that the file is named rosecurepy.
we will switch to the layout section and install the add-on. Once installed, we will add a rose cube. Now we can modify the values of A, B and segment in the bottom left panel. At the moment, our cure will look flat. If we want to add more volume and shape to it, we will usually have to create more vertices and connect them. However, since we already have a basic shape, it is better to use modifiers to change the structure. Let's add the reference to the vMesh library. We will use this library to apply the changes of the modifiers that we add. Inside execute, we will add the variable mod, and we will add the modifier solidify. We will be able to use obj modifier new to add different modifier. If we store the reference of the modifier in a variable, we can modify the properties of the modifier. In this case, we will add thickness with a value of 0.5 and offset with a value of 0. We will add the variable dg and call the function ppy context evaluate desk grab get. This will allow us to get the data of the figure with the evaluated modifiers. We will create the variable pm and call bmesh new to assign a new mesh to it. We'll call the function bm from object and pass it the reference of obj and dg. This will allow us to create a new figure with the evaluated data from obj. We will also call bm to mesh and pass it the reference of mesh. This function will allow us to update the figure since we have a storage reference in the variable mesh. We will call the function obj modifiers clear to remove the modifiers. We will no longer need them because we have already assigned a copy of the shape with the modifiers evaluated.
we will save the changes and reinstall the add-on. Finally, we will add again a rose cube to see the changes. Now we will add a second modifier. This modifier will be of type subdivision surface. This modifier will add many vertices making it look a little bit round. We will add the variable mod do using obg modifier new with the value of subsurf. We will add levels with value of 2. We will save the changes, reinstall the add-on and add again a rose cube. Now we will add two properties, solidify input and subdivision input. This modifier will be used to capture the value that we will assign to the levels and thickness attributes. We will assign the value of solidify input and subdivision input to mod and mod2. We will save the changes and reinstall the add-on. Then we will add a rose cube add-on again and change the value in the lower left panel. <laughs> 